Yesterday, as chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, I had the honor of welcoming a group of important guests to Washington. The committee was joined by the families of some of the victims in last month's mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. A white supremacist marched onto the tops, into the Topps grocery store with an assault rifle and massacred 10 black Americans in cold blood, wounded three others. Just weeks after laying their loved ones to rest, these families flew to Washington to deliver one very simple, straightforward message to Congress. Do something. Do something to prevent the next mass shooting, to combat the lethal threat posed by violent white supremacists, to honor the memory of those who were slain in this horrifying act of racist violence. One of the family members who attended yesterday was Garnell Whitfield, Jr., his brother Raymond, their mother, Ruth Woodfield, was the eldest victim in the Buffalo shooting. She was 86 years old. In the hours before her murder, Mrs. Woodfield just finished her, her regular daily ritual, visiting her husband, Mr. Woodfield's father, at his nursing home. The two had been married for 68 years, and in an instant, she was gone. Their family is shattered. During yesterday's hearing, Mr. Whitfield courageously voiced what millions of Americans feel about the devastating run of mass shootings in America, outrage. He asked me and the fellow committee members there a really important question. What are you doing? You were elected to protect us. Is there nothing that you can personally be willing to do to stop the cancer of white supremacy and domestic terrorism it inspires? Mr. Whitfield concluded his testimony with the following words I hope every member of the Senate will hear. He said, Mrs. Ruth Whitfield's life mattered. Your actions here will tell us if and how much it mattered to you. We heard the same sentiment from across the country, from Uvalde, Texas, to Chicago, Illinois. It's impossible to keep track of these mass shootings. They've claimed so many innocent lives. During this past weekend alone, our nation was hit with at least 10 of them. 10. Think about it. In this country, 10 in one weekend. In many countries, most countries around the world, there are none. No other developed nation on earth experiences this degree of bloody carnage every day, every week. And if we want to prove to Americans like Garneau Whitfield that lives of their loved ones that were lost really do matter to us, we have to do something in the Senate. The first thing is simple. Close the loopholes on the purchase of guns. Currently, there's a bipartisan group of senators working on this issue. I commend this group, especially Senators Murphy and Cornyn, Democrat and Republican, who are leading this effort. We're also going to hold a hearing next week in the Judiciary Committee over a phenomenon which is equally embarrassing. Gunfire is now the leading cause of death for kids in America. Did you hear that? Gunfire, the leading cause of death of children in America. We talk about protecting our kids. Our highest priority, well, the guns are killing our kids. More than automobiles, more than poison, more than accidents in the home. That brings me to our second obligation to families like the Whitfields. It was the focus of our hearing yesterday. We've got to condemn and combat the hateful ideology that has inspired attacks like the mass shooting in Buffalo. During the previous administration, officials within the FBI and Department of Homeland Security shared a sobering assessment. This was under the previous President Trump. They found that since 2000, the year 2000, white supremacists have been, quote, responsible for more homicides than any other domestic extremist movement. Right now, in the words of FBI Director Ray, the threat of domestic terrorism is metastasizing across America, and we've seen evidence of it time and again. In the past decade alone, white supremacists have committed mass shootings in a church, in a Sikh Gurdwara in the state of Wisconsin, synagogues, not to mention a Walmart and a grocery store. We've seen other acts of domestic terrorism. This past weekend in Wisconsin, Madam President, a violent extremist broke into the home of a former judge, shot him to death. 
The murder was found with a list of names that included that judge and other officials, including the governor of your state. It's no coincidence that the threat of white supremacy is growing worse at a time when racist rhetoric is being dragged into the mainstream of our discourse. The fact is, in 2022, hate has a formidable platform on Fox News. Media figures like Tucker Carlson are amplifying false racist conspiracy theories like the so-called Great Replacement Theory to millions of vulnerable Americans. Night after night, Tucker Carlson legitimizes the fiction that his political opponents are scheming to de deliberately change the demographics of America. It's the same racist dogma that inspired the resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan 100 years ago. They just took off the white robes on this gang. Tucker Carlson and pundits like him traffic in fear and hate. They are radicalizing their viewers by preying on paranoia and winking to the far-right extremists who look to them for leadership. Tragically, we've seen the growing use of political violence against elected officials, against flight attendants, against election workers, school board members, other public servants. Just this morning, to make it clear, our condemnation of violence applies on the right and on the left. Just this morning, news broke that a man was arrested near the home of Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Carrying at least one weapon and with burglary equipment, he told police he was planning on killing the justice. Let me be clear. We have to stand united. Democrats, Republicans, independents, left and right, voters and non-voters alike, in condemning violence wherever its source, right or left. Whether violence is being threatened against a sitting Supreme Court justice or Capitol Hill police officer on January 6th who wanted to defend this building from the insurrectionist mob, it is unacceptable and inexcusable. As the threat of domestic terrorism looms over the country, we must ensure that members of law enforcement have resources, training, and our support in their legitimate exercise of their duty. That's why we need to pass the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act. I put this bill on the floor in 2017. It ensures that the federal government will keep track of the crimes and the nature of them. That's it. It doesn't give any new powers of investigation, surveillance, or arrest. It simply counts the numbers of attacks and where they come from. It was a decision of the Trump administration to remove white supremacy as one of the motives for this domestic terrorism at a time when the head of the FBI tells us that threat is metastasizing across America. President Trump was wrong. The FBI should be keeping track of these crimes so that we know the source of this violence. That's why this legislation is needed, not just to pass in the Senate, but to say to the Whitfield family in Buffalo, New York, we hear you. We're going to start by doing something very basic. And as we watch one community after another torn apart by sickening acts of violence, the members of, these Senate, the members of this Senate have to go beyond thoughts and prayers. If anyone in this body is unwilling to take even the most basic steps to save lives, I would encourage them to follow the advice Mr. Garnell Whitfield offered yesterday. If you won't want to take any action, yield your position of authority and influence to others that are willing to lead. Madam President, I yield the floor.